Look, I was brought up on television. Uh, certain shows I never saw first run. I never paid attention to them, but when you're playing a college in Norfolk, Virginia, turn on that television in the afternoon when you arrive, it's really fun. Gilligan's Island, I never saw a first run. I've only seen the reruns. And it's interesting, it doesn't matter that you miss 25 or 30 years, they have a song at the beginning of the show <laughs> that fills you in on everything you have to know. No, Gilligan went on an island too, and the captain went with him, and Ginger and the professor too, and the maroon on an island with six schmucks. <laughs> I was on What's My Line once. I was the mystery guest, and this was not in the first run network. This is when it was going out of syndication already. It was, it was the beginning of my career 12, 13 years ago, and I was the mystery guest. Gives you some idea, right? Uh, <laughs> sign in, please. Used to be thunderous applause, Robert Klein. It sounds like an owl flew into the theater. Who, 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 who? <laughs> People have no idea who this is. Yeah? Well, sit down, and like an idiot, I disguise my voice. I'm gonna be afraid of it. No, yes. Look, look, right. They flipped all the cards. They had to get more cards to flip. It was too embarrassing. No one had a clue. After the 90th question there, are you bigger than a bread box? It was hopeless. <laughs> the panel could not get me. Then they took off their blindfolds and they still couldn't get me. <laughs> Arlene Francis, even at the end. Are you sure you're in comedy, young man? <laughs> I put in that category the Channel 9 kind of thing. You know, um, Leonard Nimoy in Search Of. He's a wonderful actor, a very nice guy, I know him. And since he had ear surgery, he feels so much better at parties. You know? It's not easy being the only one. Some people try not to point, but anyway. Always finding men from outer space, and they have a kind of a disclaimer at the end, like a real quickie. You have to be an Evelyn Wood idiot savant graduate to read, you know. What I mean? <laughs> Some of these scenes may represent actual scientific fact. Others, if you believe this bullshit, leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's a speculation, Robert. Okay. There are always people find that if someone from outer space lands in their backyard and they talk to them, never credible scientific witnesses. I'll believe it when they stop landing in the backyard of some Ozark moron, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, me and my brother seen him. <laughs> well, they was drinking some, we wasn't drunk, and we seen them come down there and they had these green faces from the gym. Certainly, you know. <laughs> and just drank nail polish remover with Sunoco 260 chasers. <laughs> Telling me he's seeing people from outer space. I'll believe all that when they land in Carl Sagan's backyard. Give me a call, we'll talk. <laughs> Let him land at the Princeton School for Advanced Studies, we'll talk. Call me up. Land in Mike Wallace's backyard. <laughs> They'll go back to outer space so fast you wouldn't believe it. In other words, you little green-eyed bastards are frauds. <laughs> 60 minutes. Approximately the size of New Jersey. Everything is approximately the size of New Jersey in journalism. Huh? Thailand is a country approximately the size of New Jersey. Israel is approximately the size of New Jersey. Your mother is approximately the size of New Jersey. Well, that's approximately the size of New Jersey. It's the same kind of overall, uh, you know, covers everything cliche as tastes like chicken. That's a good one too, right? A frog's legs? Tastes like chicken. <laughs> Alligator meat, they have the freshest alligator meat. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> Rattlesnake steak, tastes uh, like chicken. <laughs> Look, what is that? Chicken. <laughs> My first impulse at live show business was in the Catskill Mountains in the summer. I worked as a busboy and a lifeguard in these hotels, and especially the, the um, comedian on the Saturday night show, these mountain comics, it really, 
absolutely fascinated me. They'd come out, uh, hey, you know, hey, very staccato. Hey, you two bald-headed men, you put your heads together, you make an ass of yourself, but seriously. <laughs> Insult and, you know, say, hey, what are you doing now? The clarinet gets stuck in their mouth. You know. Then he'd go into this English jokes with Yiddish punchlines. They did this sometimes, and it drove me crazy. I don't understand Yiddish. And the guy has me hooked on a good story, and I'm trailing along. You know what happened last night? I went to my wife. I said, let's make love. She said, I can't. Went to that doctor, got a pill. You know what happened? <laughs> Ask an old guy next to you who understands that. Excuse me, he's going, <laughs> you know, and it's usually an idiom. It doesn't mean exactly. I said, What did he say? He says, he says uh, I have your clothes on the clothesline good. <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was a joke about a doctor, and they go, Yeah, 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 yeah. And the doctor, they go, The doctor, and he, he says, Sure, you, I get you close on the clothesline. Good, buddy, mister, something like that. <laughs> but what does it have to... Look, if I have you... You take the laundry, you hang it on the line, then I go to you I'd say, I got your laundry on the... In other words, in other words, he goes, he takes the, the clothes. In other words, he takes... He, he, let me... He takes the clothes. In other words, he takes the clothes. He, he take May, June, July, August, <laughs> 1956 and 56. In other words, he takes... If I take the clothes, and... Now, a lot of these comedians would play the so-called minestrone circuit, too, the Italian hotels up there. It fascinated me when I got a chance to see that. In many ways, the same. Other wor in other ways, they start off a little more low-key, come out, hey, bonjour. Eh? <laughs> start throwing out a couple of words, kind of getting good with the audience, Italian words, like, hey, pizza. ISIS. <laughs> Rocky Calavino and me. Like, uh, uh, LaGuardia. Uh. Then they go into the joke. You know what happened last night? I went to my wife. I said, let's make love. She said, I can't. Went to the doctor, got a pill. You know what happened? La about the It's the Italian. I read somewhere, Paul Winchell, the great ventriloquist, the best at not moving his lips of all time. No question about it. Was, he loved, always loved him. Uh, Edgar Bergen was a great innovator, but moved his lips beyond all belief. You know, you couldn't tell which one was talking. Hi, Edgar. Hi, Charlie. It was, uh, moved his lips more when he was the not the dummy. I don't know. Paul Winchell is a closet doctor like I am, you know. I wanted to be a doctor, a few things got in my way. I, calculus, physics, attendance, <laughs> behavior, inclination, talent, I don't know. <laughs> Paul Winchell participated in the, in the creation of a, an experimental heart, artificial heart in Utah, not the Jarvik, but the, did you read that? True. Uh, he was one of the people who participated, and they implanted it in a calf. I think it died in about three seconds. <laughs> Let's not get carried away. He is a ventriloquist, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> not my first choice for maker of my artificial heart. You know, Robert, we've got two choices for that heart. A heart surgeon or a ventriloquist. What's your choice? <laughs> a tough one, because there are pros and cons. I think I'll go with the ventriloquist. You agree, Jimmy? Certainly, Mr. Klein is. <laughs> but I understand he had them in stitches in that surgical room there. First of all, he made the heart talk, which is a pisser. You got it, you know? And, uh, I mean, that ventricle didn't stop yapping there. It was unbelievable. And he drank a glass of water throughout the entire procedure. It was marvelous. 
I did a few years, about seven years ago, I did the $20,000 pyramid. Certainly one of the better games. You know, that's the one where you go, pickles, St. Patrick's Day, grass, things that are green, you know. <laughs> Santa Claus beard, snow, things that are white, right? This screws you up for two weeks. You walk around the street, people say, hi, Robert, things you say in a greeting. <laughs> Going to a restaurant to eat. Mr. Klein, good to see you again. How many are you? Today? Things are made for <laughs> First of all, it was so embarrassing. I'm playing with some lovely a stenographer, makes 280 a week, and, I, and she could make 15 grand, you know. And uh, I don't blame her, right? And I, it took me such a long time. Dick Clark was so patient, as you might expect from me, but it was embarrassing. You know, I had a card in front of me that says, Things that are green. I went, Things that are green. <laughs> What, Dick? You know, it's awful. <laughs> Things you sew buttons on. And, uh, Bobby. You know, doesn't he look great, Dick Clark? Man, he looks young. I've seen him up close, too. It's real. God, he's... I don't know how long. I think it's all gonna collapse on him one day and wake up, look in the mirror, and Dorian Gray himself right into a suicide, you know. You know. <laughs> da, 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 da. Anyway. The reason, the reason that I don't want, the reason that I don't want to play those games anymore is too much pressure. I got a thousand for the day, right? You do all five shows in one day. I brought a Hager two-pan suit so I wouldn't look like a pig who wore the same thing all week. And <laughs> a computer figured out there are a million six hundred thousand parameters. You know, the jacket, the vest, first pair of pants, and the second pair of pants. Jacket, no vest, first pair of pants. <laughs> jacket, no vest, no pants. <laughs> pants inside out, the other leg. Jacket inside out. Go punk, you know. No jacket, just the vest and pants. You figure it out. And everyone at work thinks you're a great dresser. Of course, you're 90 bucks. Anyway. You have a nice leisurely lunch between Wednesday and Thursday. It's not bad. But I was playing opposite uh, uh, Lynn Redgrave, and her woman won 15,000, and the woman I'm playing with wins a hair curler. Man, I mean, not a dryer. We're not talking 1895. Talking about Walgreens 2.99 on this. <laughs> and, you know, she tried to be understanding. I guess you didn't realize pickles are green. <laughs> you dumb Jew bastard! It kind of. Goes. <laughs> oh.